Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome once more, once more to another panel by the Harlem Book Fair. I want to thank Max Rodriguez once again for putting on this event year after year. Um, the television audience cannot see outside of this auditorium, but if they could, they would see the street is filled with people, um, books, there's enthusiasm. It's just a wonderful um, day, and thank God the sun is out. Um, I am Elizabeth Nunez, but before I introduce myself, I'd like to introduce my co-panelist, um, Tracy Syfax. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, just want to do a quick introduction. My name is Tracy Syfax. Um, I'm a 20-year entrepreneur. Um, I, I wrote a book titled From the Block to the Boardroom that basically chronicled my life story. And um, I'm just here to share with you all this morning. Um, I am also a recent, just as recent as two weeks ago, um, one of the White House Champion of Change uh, wow. for this year by President Obama. And, um, and I spend a lot of my time, thank you, I spend a lot of my time now speaking on ending mass incarceration and using proper reentry tools for ex-offenders coming home, and I'll tell you a little bit about why I do that later on. Well, we may seem strange partners on this, <laughs> on this stage here. Uh, the thing that binds us is that we, are, we have both written memoirs. And for me, it's my first memoir. I've written eight novels. Some of you may know some of my titles, Bruised Hibiscus, uh, Prospero's Daughter, Anna in Between, Boundaries, um, eight in all. I really am an academic. I have been teaching um, in the City University for many, many years. I'm at, currently at Hunter College. And this is my first memoir, uh, not for everyday use. So, the first question I want to ask Tracy is um, a question that a lot of people ask me actually is, how do you get the courage to put in print some really true and hard things about yourself? Because when you're writing, when, when I'm writing a, a, a novel, I can hide behind the fiction. When you're writing a memoir, you've got to put it all out there. <laughs> and that's a good question, Elizabeth, and a, good, a question that I get quite often. Um, in my book, um, I take people to my lowest point in life. And as a 20 year, 20 year business owner, a lot of people have asked that question, why would you do that? And you own the business, I own the construction and real estate well, development company. Can I just company. ask you, what, why did you do what that? Yes. Oh, as you went on. Yeah, the reason why is because, as I said, um, even though I'm a 20 year business owner, like I said, I was honored by the White House a couple of weeks ago, also made history as um, Princeton Chambers <clears throat> Entrepreneur of the Year. I live in Trenton. Princeton is Princeton. Trenton is Trenton. Um, <laughs> first African-American in the 51-year history to ever win that award. So the reason, and to answer your question, the reason why I wrote the book is because I wanted to encourage anybody else that's trapped out in that lifestyle to let them know that they can not only come out of that, but they can do some great things. Because in the state of New Jersey, I'm also still known as inmate number 226926 because of my convictions at an early age. So I wanted to take people to my lowest point in life, and then to bring them to where I am at, at today as a, as a respectable business owner in the community, a community activist, to show them that there's a way up and a way out. Well, could you talk a little bit about that lowest point in your life? How old were you, and what were the pressures on you to, to go into that life? Yeah, um, you know, and, and I say this all the time, a lot of our kids, we grow up, we don't have an opportunity to choose our parents. We don't have an opportunity to choose the environment that we grow up in. It is what it is. Um, I grew up in a single parent household, a mother on drugs. I was first into, introduced to drugs by my mother and her then boyfriend. Wow. Um, so I came up in that lifestyle where a lot of my family members would go to jail one year, come home. So I, I grew up in thinking that going to jail and coming home was a normal. That's, that's what we did. Um, only to find out later on in life that that's not what we do. Mm -hmm. um, so. Being able to take people to those lowest points, um, I started using drugs at the age of 13, wow. very young, started selling drugs at the age of 14, um, and I just grew up in that lifestyle until I was 31 years old, and I finally said enough is enough, and I made a vow in 1993 when I came home from prison that I was, made a vow to myself and my God that I was going to change my life around and I was not going back to prison, and I was not going back to that lifestyle. So my last conviction is it was 1988, and I've been wow. free ever since and, and loving Wonderful. it. Wonderful. But what, what was it? What was it that made you make that switch? If you said that since you were 12, you said, 
Um, you said you lived with a mother and her boyfriend who were just drug users. Going in and out of jail was just like going on vacation, I guess. Yes, <laughs> coming on vacation. In a lot of our uh, So what made you, after all those years, say enough is enough? Well, that, that was easy for me. In 1988, um, when I got sentenced the last time, I went back in front of the same judge that I got sentenced in 1980 under. And um, he told me, point blank, he said, listen, uh, I've, been, I've seen you twice since I've been on the bench, 1980, and here it is, 1988, and you're doing the same thing. And he basically told me, three times a charm for you. Next time, you're eligible for an 18-year sentence, wow. and I can double that sentence up and make it 36 years. So right then, a light bulb went in. That was one that. of that aha moments, like, this guy's trying to take my life. And I realized that, that I could not come back before him again and expect to get out of prison. I, I sometimes, I'm, you know, I really should be talking about my memoir too, but I'm just fascinated by his story. Um, because, you know, I think people have children and they don't realize, my sister used to say to me, she said, you know what, when you go into labor, have a good time <laughs> because that is the least amount of pain you're going to have. Yes, um, it's a lifetime thing. Mm -hmm. And people have children and they don't realize what this precious thing responsibility, yeah. is in their hands. They yes. could shape it one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And in your case, you're saying it went the other way. It went the other way, yeah. And, and I try to do that something different with my kids. It's ironic now, yeah. mm -hmm. as a father, I've, I've been, I mean, my wife will celebrate um, 30 years of marriage this August. Wow. So, wow. so when did you of, marry? Uh, 30 when you, years. Then, yeah, yeah. No, my, me and my wife have been together for 38 years. Wow. So we met in the eighth grade. So as I'm telling you my story, everything that I've gone through, my family has gone through, my wife has gone through also. Actually, there's a whole chapter in my book where she talks about the experience of what she had to go through, um, being with a person that had a drug problem, that had been to jail, that was trying to get itself together. So she has a whole chapter in my book, and it's basically the name of the chapter is from Margaret's perspective, and she oh, talks about that. Why didn't, it, why didn't it affect her? Why didn't she? It did affect her quite often. Believe me, we, we used to call it our seasons of breaking up, whereas that she said enough is enough, and she left. No, I mean, why didn't she go into that life too? Did she? My wife has never been involved with drugs or anything like that, and for a long time I hid a lot of things from her. Um, it's ironic now that here we are now celebrating our 30th anniversary in August. My wife is a correction officer. Uh -huh. My daughter <laughs> is a correction officer. That'll do it. <laughs> my son is in prison. So now talking about, oh my God. talking about how, you know, we as parents have a responsibility to our children. My son and my daughter grew up in the same household, same parents, same mother, same father. My daughter's a correction officer. My son is in prison right now. Um, and, you know, as a man, it was my responsibility to have raised my son right. My wife done all she can, but one thing about it, and I say this all the time, a woman cannot raise a man and cannot raise a boy. It takes a father to do that. So my daughter, correction officer at the age of 23, she's 30 years now, so she's a seven-year correction officer. She has a whole career in front of her. And, and my son now is starting to realize that the route that he took was the wrong route, and now he's getting himself together, and I really have high hopes that he's gonna come home and do the right thing. Okay, I have two, two huge questions. I know you, you have questions too, but um, one of them is that, I was just listening to a television program, and I forgot the name of the woman, but she had done some, a stint in jail, and she said most of the women who are in jail are there because they have because of their connection to a boyfriend, boyfriend. Yes. who has pulled them into their life. Yes. So the question I have is that, your wife wasn't pulled into the life. No, she pulled away. Yeah, but what was it? What was it that had her pulling away and not pulling into the life? Because you said you got pulled into life because of your, your mother mm -hmm. and her boyfriend mm -hmm. and the community around you. Mm -hmm. But there she was. What made her so strong not being pulled? My wife in? believed in her children more. She loved me, but she loved her children, her family, more than she loved me. And she told me that. When we broke up the last time, she said, listen, I have to leave. Mm -hmm. You're not doing right. I got a, a son and a daughter, and my responsibility is to raise my son and my daughter in an environment that's away from what you're doing. And I understood that. Living the life that I was living, I understood that. So